Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to our monthly money update for the month of April, how I budget for a fresh new month. I haven't made one of these videos since January and that one was even like a special edition because of course it was New Year's. But I am so excited to be back filming these. I'm sitting in my new little filming corner. The sun is beaming in, so we have kind of a lot of shadows, but I wasn't in the mood today to set up all of my lighting and basically I just wanted us to kind of chat heart to heart and we will head over to the desk and talk numbers after but just like two friends catching up over a cup of tea for a minute or seven or 12 <laughs> or 30 I don't know let me just say that if you guys are new here my name is Zoe I'm 27 and I live in Montreal I love to make videos about budgeting and lifestyle and mental health and the intersection of all three because I feel like all of these make up our healthy and wealthy best lives and that is the journey that we are on together. So if that sounds good, I would love for you to subscribe and whether or not you're new, please give this video a thumbs up. Please like the video because it really does support my channel. It means a lot to me. So let's chat about money. And as always in this video, I wanna start by talking about my money feels. I also kinda of wanna talk about what's been up in the few months that I haven't been filming these concrete updates. I was including little updates and cash stuffing videos in my monthly resets, but you guys know we normally take 30 minutes to 45 minutes every single month to catch up. I think at New Year's, I felt so much pressure to come out with all of these financial goals and all of these financial videos that by the time I wrapped up all of those videos, I was like, I don't wanna think about money and I don't wanna talk about money anymore. I think my kind of money story and my evolution so far with money, right? Because our, you know, our journeys are never ending, but money went from being this thing that I never really talked about. It wasn't super talked about in my family growing up. And when it was talked about, it was like anger at someone or something, or, you know, there's not enough. And, and, and it was very negative. So I grew up with a lot of negative feelings about money and a lot of worry. And somehow I turned my feelings of worry and my anxieties into these kind of online video diaries talking about money. And you guys can go back for years and just see my evolution of paying off my debt and starting the cash budgeting and really wrapping my head around my finances and setting so many different goals, forgetting about some, achieving others. I think it's really, really cool. And then along that journey, the fact that YouTube has become my job is also just mind blowing. So the way that I guess I've kind of taken something that made me feel really, really stressed out. And now cash budgeting is my hobby and making YouTube videos is my hobby, my passion, as well as my job. And we have this amazing community I think is so cool. And because of all of that, I am constantly thinking of money. I am constantly thinking about cash budgeting. I am constantly thinking about saving. I'm constantly thinking about what I'm buying and what is YouTube gonna think of that and just sharing so many of the details of my personal finances on the internet. And don't get me wrong, I love doing it, but I just think I needed like a teeny break. I needed to not really think so in depth about money for a few months. And I have to say it was really nice. That being said, I did notice my spending go up quite a bit. <laughs> so that's less great. But I think what I realized is I'm in a really nice place with money now, which I've worked really, really hard to get here. And so I just wanna like be grateful for it and acknowledge it where you kind of do get to a place where budgeting almost becomes second nature and tracking your expenses doesn't feel like as much work. And for me, cash budgeting still feels like a lot of fun. And as a result, I'm not constantly, constantly thinking about money and more specifically worrying about money the way that I used to. Anyways, all of these rambles to say that I'm happy to be here kicking off the month of April with you guys. I was kind of slacking on my goals a little bit. I was very much just like on autopilot with the budget tracker and the cash envelopes. And I was telling myself that April was gonna be the month where I really, really, really get my financial together start making big strides towards my goals. So all of that is going to start today. I just recently filmed and uploaded the kickoff video for my 100K net worth journey. So check that out if you haven't seen it already, but that definitely got me very, very hyped up to kind of 
get back into savings mode, stay on my cash budget grind, all of that. Speaking of cash budgeting, if you guys are looking to get started, first of all, I highly recommend it. I will link my intro to cash budgeting video down below. I've been told it's very, very helpful, but I also wanted to let you guys know that partnering up with The Line, who are the makers of the cash envelopes that I use, we're now offering personal one-on-one -on -one services. So you guys can book a call with me. It will be 30 minutes and I will give you my undivided attention and personalized tips for cash budgeting. If that interests you, I will link it down below. But I also have over a year's worth of content sharing my cash budgeting and my cash budgeting tips with you guys. So there's lots out there for you to explore. I'm trying to think if I have any other money updates. I guess the biggest update actually is that March was my first month without an office and I think that also kind of played a role with my spending because my expenses have gone down significantly. They've been cut pretty much in half by removing the office rent that I was paying. And the office rent was a business expense, but I do think it took such a weight off of my shoulders that I've kind of been like eyeing things a little bit more and wanting to shop a little bit more. I definitely have been spending more money on Maggie seeing dog sitters as well as going out to coffee shops and stuff. but those I'm really counting as the replacement bucket for the office rent. So that doesn't really bother me. And those I have not been including in my cash budget. I still track them in my budget tracker. Actually, some of the coffees I didn't track to be honest, cause they're like business expenses, but the Maggie dog sitting, I don't think I can write that off as a business expense. So I have been tracking it and I'm actually gonna try and budget for it with cash anyways. But that's the biggest kind of money update. And I'm really proud of myself because I definitely worried that in getting rid of the office, I would lock myself in the house, not want to go out and not want to spend money because when I first started thinking of getting rid of the office, it was all about saving money. But every single week I have gone out, I've had my, I call it my Zoe's big day out where I go somewhere, I go to a coffee shop. Last week I was doing a no spend, so I went to the library. I think you guys will see the no spend vlog after this one because I filmed like hours and hours of footage and I'm kind of dreading editing it to be honest but that will be out soon. But I've just really, really made a point of getting out of the house. And you guys, I feel like a new person. I am so happy. It brings me more joy than the office did for way less money. I just, I kind of feel like myself again. And I feel like this freedom that I haven't felt in a while. And I don't know, it just, it feels really good. The home also looks really good with the new home office, with the standing desk. I vlogged a lot of the changes, so I'm excited for you guys to see that. I guess all of that kind of wraps up nicely to say that I'm in a pretty good place. I'm feeling pretty happy. Although I did have a higher spend month, I'm feeling pretty good and confident about money. Work has been really great. I've been really busy. I've straight up been busting my ass, working really hard, but enjoying working really hard. So with all of that being said, why don't we head over to my desk and take a look at some of the numbers. I actually haven't sat down and really, really looked at things yet. I think for the most part, like the last time I did a check-in, I'm doing pretty good not too you know, crazy far over budget. And I think I'm gonna be able to hit a lot of my goals this month, but I have to say that March has felt so long. <laughs> it really dragged on. I feel like I've lived three different months just in this one month. And the numbers kind of always tell a story as well. So I'm excited to get into that. So let's head over to my desk. All right, welcome to my desk. We kind of have a lot going on here. Cash envelopes, my wallet. <laughs> our green tea and our new best friend, Rich Baby Piggy. This is actually where I wanna start. Doing cash envelopes, I wind up with a lot of small change and it's been so fun taking all of that change and putting it into my piggy bank. I just feel like it's such a fun way to save a little bit of money and a little bit goes a long way, you guys. So I would love for you to join me. Go get yourself a piggy bank and we can be the rich baby piggy gang. I named her after the Drake song. <laughs> this is the one that I painted myself in my monthly reset for the month of February. I would definitely appreciate it if you guys could let me know if you like having the budgeting inside the monthly reset or if you prefer it separate like this. I feel like the answer is separate but maybe what I could do is include the what I spend in a month in the monthly resets because having three videos to make 
that are all kind of timely to the end of the month was just way too much pressure for little old me. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. I'll keep playing around with the format. But these monthly monies are like my OG thing. And so I feel like... I feel like they're just kind of a staple on my channel. I just had to go get my second camera for when we do the cash envelopes. So we just talked about how I felt like March went, but now let's actually take a look at the numbers. This right here is the sample budget tracker. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my personal budget tracker. And this of course is the budget tracker that I've been using for a long time now, the one from the line. So let's quickly run through each category. I wanna do the overview and then we can go in and take a look at some of the juicy things or not so juicy that I spent this month. Starting with groceries, I budgeted $400 and I spent 392. This is not accurate. I actually spent so much on groceries this month that I had to dip into my other envelopes to help cover me. I've been dining out a lot less, cooking at home so much more, plus just kind of prioritizing the ingredients that I buy. I used to just buy like whatever was cheapest and now I've been spending a little bit more, I've kind of been splurging to buy the higher quality meat and fish, the better quality oat milk. I just decided that this was an area that I felt comfortable and really, really wanted to put a little bit of extra money and effort into. And I think for myself, just kind of investing more a little bit in groceries has made me so much more motivated to cook. That being said, I'm still always on the lookout for a deal. Tonight, I'm actually going to make chicken legs <laughs> because they were on sale. So I've just kind of been balancing both, but I think just overall groceries have gotten so expensive. I'm sure you guys can relate. I used to easily be able to spend less than $400 on groceries. And now it's like, it's looking like 500 is gonna be like my like reasonable number, which is kind of crazy. So what you're seeing on the screen isn't 100% accurate because I did have to dip into some other envelopes, like I said. I spent nothing in the home category, which was pretty cool. I was anticipating making some purchases and then I end up getting an amazing opportunity to work with Cozy on a video. There was this chair from Cozy that I was gonna buy and then it worked out that we could work together on a video. So I definitely saved a little bit of money there, which was really, really cool. I'm so excited for you guys to see that video. This was a real pinch me moment. In the treat yourself category, I overspent by $100. I feel like this is also not accurate. We're gonna see when we go in and look at the individual purchases. For Maggie, I spent $85. I bought her a huge bag of food with February's budget. So other than the dog sitter, there actually weren't too many expenses for her this month, but I think I'm missing a few visits to the dog sitter because I used Rover and it went on my credit card. Like I said, you guys, this was a really crazy month. <laughs> I'm like having trouble remembering everything. I thought I was so thorough with my budget tracker and now looking at this, I'm like, I think I missed a bunch of stuff. I'm happy to report that in the coffee category, I was right on budget. I budgeted 25 and spent 26.61. Once again, this doesn't include the coffees on my Zoe's day out because those are coming out of a business budget. For dining out, I budgeted $250 and spent 248. This was saved by the no spend challenge. Had I not done the no spend challenge, this would have been higher. So that's great. Transportation, it's showing zero dollars, but I actually have to edit, but I actually have to edit that because today I bought a 10 class pack for the Metro. How much did it cost? I can't even remember. I think it was like $35. So that was a purchase that I wasn't expecting, but I think it will last me like all of April, definitely. Personal care, I budgeted 60 and spent 195. Gifts, I only spent $11. Books, I overspent by $25. I had budgeted zero. For gas, I budgeted 250, which is above my usual, but it's because we had a big road trip to do this month and I ended up spending almost $300 on gas, which I think is the most I've ever spent in a month. But again, it's because we drove to Southwestern Ontario, which is like an eight hour drive. It's super, super long. Plus I need to start factoring in to my gas budget. The fact that I now work minimum once a week, I work out in TMR, which is like a part of Montreal, pretty far from where I live. So I do have to take my car. Sometimes I'm stuck sitting in traffic. So I'm using my car a little bit more frequently than I used to, which means I do need to bring my gas budget up, but it should not be this high every single month. That's insane to me. Healthcare, zero dollars. I spent 750 on parking, $15 on workouts when I budgeted zero, nothing for the car, thankfully, and vacation. So I was still in Florida for the first few days of March, $158. 
which was all budgeted for. So you guys can see on the screen, there is quite a bit of red, but funny enough, it seems to all balance out and I'm only over budget by $100. I actually am shook. I kind of can't believe it. <laughs> I'm gonna go back in here and add when I had my baby sat, I think it was on the 9th. JS paid for one of the days and I paid for the other. It was $40. So truthfully, I spent $125 on Maggie. This makes a lot more sense. Let's go back to the expense log and just take a closer look at what I spent. The first couple of things here, you guys can see this was when I was on vacation. Okay, these two are really stupid here at the beginning of the month in the treat yourself category. Because we had that long road trip coming up, I didn't want to sit in the car and just scroll on my phone the entire time. I wanted something to do with my hands to distract me. So I bought this knitting kit, okay? I thought it was for kids. I spent $45 on it and it was very much not for kids and it was very much for experienced knitters. So I bought it, I opened it up in the car and I was like, I can't, I can't do this. Knit five, purl three, slip stitch. And I was like, I, I, uh, like, I don't know what to do. So on the way to our destination, we pulled over at a Michael's and I bought this like punch needle kit. It was way cheaper. I deeply regret buying that knitting kit. It was so overpriced. It was like this fancy Scandinavian brand. I swear I thought it was for kids. Anyways, because I had opened it, I couldn't return it. So now I need to learn how to knit, which isn't the end of the world, but it was definitely kind of a waste of money. So in total, I spent $60 on just like crafty things to do in the car. The needle punch kit was 16 and it was just like perfect and great. It occupied me all the way there and all the way back. So we have coffee on the road, subway on the road. This was some of the gas for the road trip. I had a gift card for a pedicure, but it didn't cover the tip. So I spent $15 on that. These here, you guys can see, I flagged them as spent on credit. Whenever I flag something as spent on credit, it means that I did not pay myself back from my cash envelopes. I never pay for gas with cash. It just doesn't really make sense for me. But in the personal care category, I had a strict $60 budget for my nails, which means that I didn't have the extra 15 for the tip on the pedicure. Went out for dinner for ramen, bought some groceries, bought more groceries, more groceries, more groceries, more groceries, more groceries. Then I went for dinner for ramen. What, I didn't go for, did I put this in twice? I did, I put this, did I go for ramen twice? No, I only went once. But how did, this is not accurate, I need to delete this. I went for pho for $27. Oh man, I'm such a mess this month, it's kind of embarrassing. Got my nails done, bought coffee. Okay, this was my kind of like splurge treat yourself moment. I ordered some new pajamas from Simon's. You guys might've seen them if you watch my vlogs. I was like trying them on and I'm absolutely obsessed with them, but I did spend $143. I highlighted this because I spent it on credit, but I figured I might be able to pay myself back from one of the categories that I didn't really touch. So we'll do that in a second. Gas again, and then here is a bunch of stuff. You guys can see I flagged it because these were all things that I bought during the no spend week. In the no spend, I'm allowed to buy groceries, okay? And we had like one fail moment, but you'll just watch the vlog and see for yourself. More groceries, the dog sitter books. Now here in red, you guys can see I had to make two cash adjustments because when I was checking in with my budget, in both the groceries category and my dining out category, I was mismatched by about $100 which means that I spent money somewhere without inputting it and I couldn't find the receipts. I double checked that I made sure that the starting amount was the correct starting amount in the budget tracker and it was. So in both categories, I like mislogged a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Just being fully transparent, this month was kind of crazy for me in terms of my personal life. Like if you watch my vlogs, you know, um, but I'm, so I'm just blaming it on that. Okay. I'm blaming the chaos on that, but I do think this gives me a good opportunity to remind you guys that budgeting and using a budget tracker, following cash envelopes, it's never about being perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to mismatch by a hundred dollars and it's okay. Like I never want you guys to not start budgeting because of the fear of being perfect. That kept me away from budgeting for a long time. And in the end, I was only hurting myself. This mismatch $200 in the long run is nothing compared to how much money I save plus all of the invaluable peace of mind that this system gives me. So I'm human, I make mistakes, you probably will too along the way. 
it happens. Down here is where things get more interesting because this is where I really started to run out of cash and in my envelopes. Uh, we have Maggie's daycare, no problem. Groceries, I had to spend $50 in groceries from my dining out envelope because I was out of money in my groceries envelope. So you guys can see I tagged it as an envelope swap. I had to buy more gas. My tank was so close to empty and I was like, can't you just, can't you just wait until April? But I really get like gas meter anxiety. As soon as it goes into the red, I have to fill up and I have to fill it all the way up. So hopefully in April, my gas bills will be pretty low. I went to Dairy Queen last night with JS. He bought us dinner, so I bought us Dairy Queen after for $11 and I had to take it out of the gifts budget because my dining out was empty. I didn't budget for this, but I just cracked and went and got a haircut. I wanted a spring refresh. So I went and got a haircut today and it was $100 with tax and tip and everything. And I like it, so there you go. I had $5 left in my coffee envelope this morning, so I bought a matcha on my way to my haircut. I took the Metro to my haircut, so I ended up just buying a 10 pack to refill and not have to worry about it for a little while. And then this last entry is the old dog sitter. So if you guys have a keen eye, you will notice that this all ends on the 28th of March. That's because that is today's date. I'm closing my budget a little bit early because I wanted to get this video up for you guys right at the beginning of March. I mean, April. Also, this coming weekend is Easter, so I knew that I wasn't gonna have a lot of free time to do this budgeting changeover. You know what, March was such, <laughs> March was kind of a rough month, so I'm happy to close it and move on early. Now, what I wanna do next is check out what is left in my cash envelope. So I'm gonna open up my folio, and I'm gonna take out all of these envelopes. So according to the budget tracker, I should have almost $8 left in the groceries envelope. I have about $3 and some change in here. I'm actually gonna keep the big coins and put those in my wallet. I'm also gonna keep the 25 cents and the rest I'm gonna put, wow, inside the pig. Dining out is completely empty. Coffee is completely empty. Personal care, completely empty. Maggie, this is all pretty much her sinking fund because we only had $25 left in the budget. Two, four, six, and 50. So we have $110 left in here for Maggie. I'm just gonna keep that in the envelope for now. For gifts, I had budgeted $40. We have 35 left and there was definitely some change in my wallet. So I'm gonna put that there, 35. And treat yourself, I still have $40 left in the envelope because the amount that I spent was more than what I had in the envelope, so I couldn't immediately reconcile. So I'm gonna put it into this pile and hopefully it's all gonna add up so that I can reconcile and put it in my spent on credit envelope. You're gonna see what I mean. Home, I had budgeted $100 and there is still $100 in here. This is my spent on credit envelope. Let's say I go to a coffee shop and I wanna buy a matcha for $5, but this coffee shop is in the modern age and they do not accept cash. I'll pay with my credit card and then right away take $5 out of my coffee envelope and stick it in here so that I'm immediately reconciled. I try to do this as much as possible. It's usually things like personal care or treat yourself that I kind of have like a splurge moment, let's say like my haircut, where I don't even have the cash to reconcile. Otherwise, it always goes in here. Having this envelope makes cash budgeting stay accessible even with more and more places not accepting cash anymore. Or if you happen to forget your envelopes at home, you just use your credit card and then you reimburse yourself. It happened to me a few times with groceries where I was already out and about, didn't have my groceries envelope, and then I was like, oh, I'm just gonna pop into the grocery store. So I just paid myself back afterwards. That could also be where some things got lost, but I was able to catch it and just kind of do that adjustment like you guys saw. So this stays here. And then the last envelope is my savings envelope. So let's see how much is in my savings. This is where I put any leftover cash. If I'm under budget in a month, I'll put leftover cash in here. We have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110. So I'm gonna keep that in this envelope. I also actually have some extra money that I wanna put into my savings. I sold some of my furniture from my old office. Two, four, six, eight, 100. Two, four, six, eight, 200. Two, 40, $250. I am going to add this to my savings. 
not 100% what I'm saving up for here, but it just feels so fun to start building some savings in cash because it always just feels like a surprise and you will be surprised how quickly this all adds up. So I'm gonna put this aside for now. All right, so now with this leftover money, if we take a look at my expense summary, we can see that I was $100 over in treat yourself and $135 over in personal care. Those are the two biggest categories. So right here with this $100, I can repay myself for treat yourself and stick it in the spent on credit to be reconciled. And then we have $65, which doesn't fully cover the personal care, but it definitely helps. So instead of taking this, putting it into the savings envelope and kind of skewing and then having more money owing on my credit card, I'm just gonna put all of this into my spent on credit envelope. And then all of this will come with me. I will put it in the ATM and I will use it to pay off next month's credit card statement. All right, so here we have all of the envelopes. So that's that for March's cash budget. Now it's time to set April's budget. So I'm gonna put these over here. Let's click in to April's tab and let's create my budget. For the month of April, I am going to give myself a cash budget of $1,200. This is more than I normally give myself and the main categories that I'm going to put this money towards are groceries and Maggie. So let's go ahead and set this budget. Starting with groceries, I wanna do $450. I'm not quite ready to increase my groceries budget to 500. It just like, it just, it's just too much for me. We're gonna skip home for now. I want to do, I'm trying to think what feels reasonable for treat yourself. Let's start with 100 and see how it goes. This is always the Tetris portion of making my budget, but I just find it so fun. For Maggie, I'm gonna do $150. I'm gonna do $30 for coffee this month. Dining out, I wanna do 250. I'm gonna do zero for transportation. I really don't think I'm gonna need anything. I'm gonna do $60 for personal care. It really should just be my nails this month. I'm gonna do $40 for gifts just because it's a nice buffer. It's also my mom's birthday in April, so I can use this to, I really wanna bake her a cake, so I can use this to put towards the supplies of buying her a cake. Books, $0. Gas, let's do 150. Actually, let's do, let's do 200, because I think I'm gonna go, well, I am gonna to go to Ottawa, so. Healthcare, I have an appointment booked with my acupuncturist. The last time I saw her was $80, but that was like four years ago. So it very well could have gone up. I realized the lighting is changing and it's like really dark. Bear with me, you guys. So I'm gonna budget $100 for healthcare. This is not a cash category. Parking, let's just say $10. Workouts, let's say 15. That's one class with my friend Sasha, who's a Pilates instructor. I am thinking about buying a pack of reformer Pilates classes, but that would kind of come out of my like business budget in replacing the office. So I'm not gonna put that in here for now. I also just don't think I'm gonna buy it just yet because I have some other packs that I wanna use up before I spend like $300 on a class pack of workout classes. Car stuff, um, I'm gonna budget 150 because I need to get, I don't think it costs that much, I can't remember but I need to get my summer tires put back on. Vacation, nothing, Christmas, nothing, and skiing. I'm gonna put $50 because I think we have a spring ski day coming up. Okay, now I need to see the sum of all of the cash categories, which are the ones that I've just highlighted. This adds up to $1,080. So I still have $120 to play around here. Let's do $100 for home. And let's bump treat yourself up. Actually, no, I wanna do $50 for home and then I can do 170 for treat yourself. So let's check. That's perfect, $1,200. So that is my cash and non-cash budget for the month of April. <laughs> we are losing daylight here, so I need to fly through the rest of this video. I'm setting up my other camera again, lit. <laughs> I'm like getting stressed. So I have all of the cash here. I went to the ATM earlier today. Let's stuff these cash envelopes. This is always my favorite part of the video. So starting with home, let's do $50. Two, four, six, eight, 100. Two, four, no, 150. 170 for treat yourself. Two, four, six, eight, 
100, 2, 4, 6, 8, 200, 2, 4, 6, 8, 300, 2, 4, 6, 8, 400, 20, 40, and 50. This is all, whoop. Oh my gosh. This is all for groceries. You guys, this is actually a good opportunity for me to tell you because I was just thinking like, oh, it's so fun and satisfying stuffing these cash envelopes. Like I seriously just love it. But the line recently launched a new cash envelopes product. It's like a clear folio. It looks super, super cool. And it is their most affordable cash envelopes option to date. So you can get a starter kit. I think she said it's for like around $30. You can get a full cash envelope starter kit highly recommend that $30 investment will ch completely change your budget trust me two four six eight one hundred two four six eight two hundred and fifty dollars for dining out You guys, I just had the biggest panic because I was missing money and I was like, did I lose it on my way home from the ATM? It was like stuck in a little corner of my bag. Ugh, okay, I'm gonna empty the treat yourself envelope because I actually wanna use the $100 bill here. So we said 150, 60, 70 for treat yourself. I feel so messy right now, you guys. I'm just like, I can't seem to get my shit together. The lighting's all orange, ugh. It's okay. Who remembers the monthly money video that I had to film when my eye was swollen shut with eczema? Who remembers that? Those were the good days. For the most part, not much stopped me from filming these videos. I took a little break, but <laughs> I'm very dedicated to them. All right, what's next? This is a mess. We said $40 for gifts. $30 for coffee. $50 and $60 for my nails. Personal care. And finally, two, four, six, eight, 150 for Maggie. This all adds up perfectly for you. And you guys, the very best part is clipping everything into the envelope. I always like to have groceries, dining out, and coffee right at the front because these are the ones that I reach for the most. And then we can do personal care, Maggie, treat yourself, home gifts and then savings and spent on credit always go at the back and this will come with me to the ATM. You guys are getting a sneak peek right now of my new living room addition. So satisfying, so beautiful. This is the leather folio. You guys can see it's engraved with my initials, embossed, I think it's actually called. This is super great for upgrading once you've stuck with the cash envelopes for a little while, you can upgrade. My pro tip would be to start with the vegan leather folio or the new clear folio. And once you've stuck with the method for a couple months, you can treat yourself and upgrade to this gorgeous leather folio because it really does become your wallet and it makes it so nice just to have this beautiful aesthetic kit. As silly as it may sound, it really does motivate me. So let's wrap up this video. I have no more tea to hold because it's gone cold. I have been filming for over an hour, you guys. I'm usually able to edit these down to like a somewhat reasonable length, but they really, really do take me a long time to film. But I always have so much fun doing it. So the last thing I want to talk about is credit cards and goals. So my MasterCard was super, super low this month and my American Express was a little bit higher. I had some vacation spending on there. I actually had most of my vacation spending just because of the way my credit card cycles work on my American Express. 
I also had quite a few business expenses go on there, but I had been kind of saving throughout the month and putting some money aside to be able to stress freely pay off my credit card. So I'm really glad about that. And then, like I said, the MasterCard was about $150. So I'm able to pay that off straight away. The next areas of focus are my savings, savings and investments, I should say. And my top priority there is contributing $1,000 to my retirement investments. So I will be able to do that. I then wanna start putting some money towards my sinking funds. I wanna start with my vacation fund. So my goal is to put $500 there. From what I've looked at in my bank accounts, that should be able to get done and I actually think I will have a little bit more money to put towards either my retirement or my funds. I do wanna really start focusing on my funds though. If you guys watched the 100K kickoff, then you saw that. That being said, I also have a bunch of expenses coming up in the month of April, mostly all business expenses. I'm really looking seriously at upgrading some of my tech, upgrading my computer. We are also working on bringing back the gentle productivity planners. So there are some expenses there in terms of like making the planners. So I do need to make sure that I'm keeping enough cash on hand. So I just need to be strategic there. I'm very grateful to be in a position that despite all of this going on, I'm feeling pretty calm and level-headed and I'm still able to reach my goals for the month. There's been many months you guys saw where I was taking from my emergency fund and not really hitting my goals or not even caring about my goals. So it does feel really good to be in this position. I think actually what I will do is save talking more about the financial goals for my monthly reset because I do need a little bit more time to sit down, think about it. So I will let you guys know what's up in that video and that makes it fun that we can continue spreading this conversation out. My camera's blinking at me that I have no more memory card space. I love you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. It feels so good to be back on the monthly money, how I budget train. Hope you enjoyed. I will stop talking now. See you in my next video. Bye.